Today we're going to revisit one of the best PlayStation 2 versions of Madden. We're playing Madden 08. This is in an emulator, so it looks much better than it did back in 2007, but as I've been revisiting some older games lately, I've been pretty impressed with this version of Madden. Before we dive too deep into the game, I do want to update on the Vikings franchise rebuild on Madden 23. Yesterday I posted the video of me getting the draft reset bug and being sent all the way back to the third round of the previous draft. I've gotten some feedback, some ideas on how to get past it. So here's what I have done. I redid the draft again, got back into the first preseason game, and I was told that I should quit out of this game to the main menu, so I did that. Then get back into the game, and then it froze here trying to do it, so that wasn't a very good sign. Reloaded Madden one more time, and it once again prompted me to resume that game if I wanted to. That is a benefit of Cloud Franchise, and this time it loaded me right back into the game where I had left it. Instead of, like, playing the game over again, I just fast simmed it all the way to the very end, and then hit finish game to go back to the franchise menu, and yesterday in that video, this screen here was basically blank. No goal updates, it sent me back to the third round immediately after. This time, it finishes the game just fine, and then I simulated to the next week. So that is where the file is right now. I've left it there, and if it's still in this place tomorrow, maybe I'll try doing more preseason, but maybe that is a way around the bug. I know there is, you know, a chance to defeat it. So I'll revisit tomorrow, but today I wanted to talk about Madden 08 with you because we're talking about really the golden era of PS2 Madden games. I think that's kind of the 04 to the 2008 range, but a lot of those PS2 games were just great fun and a reason why a lot of us got into the game. Now, this is not a version of Madden that I have actually like played in its prime because I had moved on to the next generation of consoles, not knowing that the PS2 era was going to be better for quite some time, and the entire 360 PS3 Wii generation was a complete waste of time, outside of Madden 12. Do like that game. But I was watching one of the retrospectives over on Soft Drink TV's channel, the Madden 08 video showed off a lot of impressive things in franchise, and the gameplay at least looked smooth with some good interactions and it looked fun. I wouldn't say that the gameplay here is like the most realistic, it definitely more blurs the lines between arcade and sim, which was perfect for the PS2 era and that uh, the technical limitations at the time. And you really get to see what they were onto with Madden at that time. Madden 06 went to the Xbox 360, I think around the time the console launched. And it was a rushed, incomplete version. The quality was basically left behind on the PlayStation 2 versions of the game. And I don't know much about the versions post-08. On the PlayStation 2, they released Madden all the way until Madden 12, but I don't see anybody talking about those later iterations, so I'm guessing some stuff was taken out. But I was impressed playing this game last week, and I knew I'd be making this video. They got me on that one. I'm like, oh, there's the Madden field goal logic I'm used to, and they end up doing the uh, direct snap punt. You see that in the NFL like once a year, maybe. Someone will break that out. But this was just a default all-pro game, I wanted to get a feel for how Madden 08 played, and it's a pretty fast-paced game, but a really fun game. I think the tackling is a lot of fun to watch. The man coverage on the PS2 era too, I really like the coverage tightness there that they're finally getting back to with like Madden 23. Now I'm trying to get the fourth down conversion here, and we end up getting ruled a first down, they go to a review. And then you get to see the whole sequence there that looks pretty cool and we were short so we lose this game. But I knew I'd want to make a video and come back to check out more of it and go deeper into franchise mode and just show it off for those of you that haven't seen it in a while or have never seen it at all. I just felt like this played really well and I was quite impressed. 
So the first thing I really wanted to do as we dive into this game is the franchise mode. I actually put out a fantasy challenge video, I think a couple months ago, that was uh, a cool mode to check out. This game also has Superstar and Tournament. Now, if I can take a detour here, this is a mode that I would love to return. Now, you think about tournaments and everything, and it's like, yeah, you can have, you know, eight, four, 16 players all go through, see who wins the tournament and everything. But this game actually did tournament in a really interesting way because you could do your standard single elimination tournaments like an NFL playoff bracket, but you could also do double elimination, double round robin, and you could actually have a decent amount of time here in one of these little leagues. I used to set these up all the time. The main downside here is if you choose fantasy draft, I think you have to draft for every single team and the CPU won't do it for other teams. So that is the one annoying thing. This was really more of a couch co-op mode. So you can understand why it doesn't get a lot of focus these days. Anyway, we're here to check out franchise mode today because the PS2 did so many things right in regards to my favorite mode here. And I want to, let's see, we can take over San Francisco or something. That's fine. So once I had that draft reset bug happen yesterday, I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do here. I thought maybe... You know, do I have to post other content for a few weeks until I can get this franchise going again? So I wasn't really ready to start a full-on franchise in anything. That's more of a big project that I want some time to uh, prepare for and obviously time to do the whole series and everything. So it's something more so I would be looking to do in the winter when Madden is far from new and we're looking for fresh content and fresh experiences here. So... Kind of a couple one-off videos might be what I focus on unless the series is up and running again. But I have a lot of interest in doing a real franchise on this game in the relative near future with perhaps a created cupcake team again like I did on Madden 09 on the PS3. But I think that this would be a much better experience because of some of the things they have in this game. So... Throwback to 2007, this is my roster here. We got a very young Alex Smith. Everybody's calling him a bust at this point. One touchdown, 11 interceptions. That is an awful rookie season, Alex. I can't believe they stuck with him. I mean, Paxton Lynch, he got like four starts in the NFL, and the Broncos were like, yeah, we are done here. Trent Dilfer, Sean Hill. Shout out to Sean Hill for starting week one for the Vikings in 2016 against the Titans in a win, I might add, so that Sam Bradford could have eight days to prepare for the next game. Good stuff. Frank Gore on this team. Daryl Jackson. Oh, yeah, former Seahawk. When did he play for Seattle? All these years uh, prior. I don't even remember him with San Francisco, honestly, that much. Ashley Lalee. Yeah, that was uh, Denver Broncos draft pick. Same year as Clinton Portis. Lily went to Hawaii. I've talked about this before, so I'm probably uh, repeating myself to a lot of y'all. Those early NFL memories of mine, they're just all tattooed there and ready to go whenever I need them. So I wanted to go through all the different things here. Of course, training camp was a cool feature here because it offered you an on-field way to boost your players. Now, these days, I'm more focused on realism, and I just want whatever accomplishes that. The PS2 games had some elements of that, but they were definitely games first, simulations second, but they were fun, and I think they did it the right way. So why don't we do one here? Let's take Frank Gore, do a ground attack drill, because you were able to take players, do a training camp drill with them, and based on how well you did, they would develop. So if you put it into the context of like, maybe you have a cupcake team, your team is terrible and you just want to get upgrades. Doesn't this feature sound like it could be a lot more fun having a chance here in the preseason to take that 65 overall running back and maybe get him somewhere. So I'm playing this game in uh, 1440p right now. So it looks uh, a lot better than it did on just native PlayStation 2 consoles. I really like... Uh, what I've been able to uh, find here with these emulators and just just to have it widescreen and upscaled makes a huge world of a difference. 
Don't want to have that 4 by 3 aspect ratio. So this was the running back drill. Man, the nostalgia is just oozing right now because I remember doing franchises and loving these uh, training camp drills. Oh, what a spin there by Frank Gore. Get those touchdowns. Man, when I heard that, that crowd sound effect, man, that was like a blast from the past. I think every touchdown, they send you back like five yards, so it gets a little bit tougher. But, I mean, we're just outrunning them here, and certainly speed advantages were well apparent in this era. You've seen all the clips, or you were, like me, running around with uh, Mike Vick just... You know, we can run circles around these guys at times and get down the sideline, just showboat. Man, we were having a blast back in the early 2000s. So, gold trophy is awarded. So, I can take three points, or I can try to risk those points and do the next difficulty level to try to get the four. But I'm not going to be greedy here. And now you can't upgrade like a lot of different ratings. Like it could get more broken if you were like upgrading his speed. But uh, agility, break tackle, and carrying. Let's work on those fumbles a little bit and the break tackle. What did that do to his overall? We got a plus one there. So you could do that for all these different drills. Pocket presence. You know I don't have any of that so I wouldn't do well. Chase and tackle is basically I think the running back. But you're playing defense instead. Precision passing. Coffin corner punt, clutch kicking, trench fight. So it was a fun way for you to just control all these players, focus on them, and then make them better. So training camp, very fun feature. I'm not sure it fits the modern era of Madden, but it was a lot of fun. So that's as soon as you get into franchise mode. I don't even know that we're in... Uh, are we in preseason? We are. These, uh, these graphics here, like the board and everything, reminds me so much like NCAA 06, too. Now, when you click on individual players here and you're just roster menu, you do notice that morale is a factor here. We have the career stats over there, roles, history. It's a pretty nice UI here for getting through stuff pretty quickly and also seeing the player model there. You can also name players a team captain, and I believe that has an impact on their morale. Maybe once we get deeper into the season, we can check that out again. And then the whole roles thing as well. So, a lot of the stuff we see in Madden 23 and recent Maddens, a lot of it really is stemmed from the past. So, this reminds you of the... The motivations or the tags that are in uh, Madden these days. The feature back. That's Frank Gore. Oh yeah, you got position battles here in preseason. So I believe this was just a way to compare stats. So you didn't have to interact with this. But if you were curious about, you know, your backup running backs or whatever, getting compared with each other, that was a cool way to just uh, show them side by side. You got the coach's corner here where you can customize a lot of stuff. Audibles. I was just on Madden 23 the other day trying to customize audibles. And I don't think you can save those to playbooks anymore. I think you have to do it in game. Who's got time for that? I'm already playing games that are over an hour long, man. I can't sit here editing all my audibles. But you can do it here. And then you got uh, your formation shifts as well. What do we got here? What is this all about? It must be something to do with audibles or something. I don't have a lot of space on my memory card here, so I can't save stuff. Uh, you might wonder, like, you're in an emulator. You have a hard drive, you know? I do have plenty of hard drive space but you actually for the emulator to run well you kind of have to have a, a fake memory card in a way that has like the proper amounts of data so i can't just have like a 100 gigabyte memory card and be good i have to actually go in there and move data around or just create a new fake memory card so that's why i'm not going to be saving any of this stuff oh yeah the newspaper this was always cool, you know, back in this era, Madden, the newspaper, the emails, they'd show you stuff around the league. It just had so much character to it. Like, there's a news feed right now in Madden 23, and it's the most soulless list of text I think I've ever seen. But you can go into these headlines as well and see 
these uh, mock headlines. So San Francisco needs to go get out of the gate quickly. They'll need to make some padding down the stretch to make the playoffs. Keep an eye on Nate Clements. He's an impact player at cornerback. That is the unspoken leader of the defense. And then from here, you can also see uh, fan expectations of your team. You can view your team overall information. You know, who's the coach? Because those headlines can be for your team or others. You can check the prestige of your coach there. Got your salary cap, which was much lower in this era. Got your rivals listed as well. Philosophies, injuries, morale is good. So that's the national newspaper. You also get a more localized one that is going to have, uh, I think, just stuff tailored around your team. Now, I don't know if in this game they had the licenses for actual... Uh, like local papers, like if you were playing as the Vikings and you checked your local paper, they had the Star Tribune, big paper there in the Twin Cities. I think here it's just this generic one, but it still, you know, gives you your team's information. Just a little bit there for that uh, immersion factor. But it's the kind of stuff, you know, if I was doing a series on here, I'd just run wild with this. It would be a big part of what I was doing. So... We're here in the preseason right now. You're able to study your upcoming opponent. You know, you can see some of the data now in Madden the last few years as they've introduced the uh, weekly training and determining how you want to approach your upcoming opponents. And a lot of that is here too. I mean, we're seeing one of their plays here. One of their favorite defenses apparently is just cover two man. And we have different plays to beat it and we can practice that play. Next opponent, the Broncos. Got to watch out for Chant Bailey, of course. And then there's a list of their best players, their philosophy. What are the other keys here? So don't throw it, don't throw outs near Chant Bailey. Going to have to keep Ian Gold occupied. Our game plan should be to expose him in coverage. John Lynch is an all pro free safety and will one day be your general manager. And then, you know, the Jay Cutler, he is far from polished at this age, makes poor decisions too often. This should improve with playing time. Great downfield arm. Still a bit erratic with his throws. He has adequate straight line speed and quickness. Wow, we just got breakdowns on everybody? Now, it's probably just, you know, generated based off of ratings. That Jay Cutler one, though, is pretty accurate. You can just get a little, uh blurb on everybody brandon marshall he's a good receiver but he should be a number two option the guy who has the nfl single game record for receptions in a game should be a number two option what is that record like 24 lacks the speed of a number one receiver in the nfl oh man this is so cool oh i just Dwayne jarrett yeah there was a time when i wanted the vikings to draft him I actually really liked the whole email function in here, and I know it would seem a little more outdated now, but the fact that it just constantly fed you these messages, and then it would keep them there, I really liked. A lot of this is kind of tutorial based, but as you get into the season, it kind of fleshes out the story of your team a little bit more. So why don't we get past the preseason stuff here? Oh yeah, let's view our progression here. Let's see what's up with that. We can see Alex Smith, you know, he got a boost to his awareness. I don't know if anything else. Uh, oh, as you scroll here, we're able to see uh, more ratings. Oh, we actually got a, a two point accuracy boost in the preseason. I wonder what were, uh, can we see some preseason stats? Yeah, he had three touchdown passes, completed 63% of his passes, 496 yards so he got himself a boost it looks like based on how he played and those are good stats so i don't mind him getting the boost off of that that's pretty cool it doesn't seem like the development is like for a lot of players though i don't really know how it works oh delaney walker's on this team wow they also have this young guy on the team you know patrick willis is he any good Let's see, no preseason stats? 17 tackles, one forced fumble, that's good. Did he get any development? Yeah, I don't know exactly how it works, but there is a spot for it. It just doesn't seem like a lot of players did develop. 
But going back to the emails here, this is another thing I really like. You know, it's telling you that Alex is playing really well. Keep an eye on him when he gets the shot to prove himself. Or here we have Ray McDonald that says, Ray is young and he has struggled because frankly, he is not as talented as the rest of the players out there. He actually got a little bit worse. He's a rookie. He actually lost uh, a point of awareness, it looks like. He lost uh, tackling. Wow. A rookie getting worse in their first preseason. I also love just how blunt they are in these messages. Like, hey, you know that linebacker we have, Brandon Moore? Don't expect much from him. He's not much more than a role player. They just give you random stuff like that. Oh, this is really cool. So on the bottom here, I just noticed there is a ticker. And you can choose, like, different data you want there. If you want to see what matchups are there flying across the bottom, different news blurbs or stats. But once you get into the real deal here, regular season football, now, of course, you got the owner's box. So they've brought back a lot of the owner's box features. And honestly, I love playing Madden as the owner of the team because you actually have to make money and have funds on hand for when you're like handing out signing bonuses and stuff like that. The reason why I don't do it anymore on Madden, the newer ones, is because they only give like the scenarios, most of them, to uh, coaches. So like you miss out on that playing as the owner. A lot of the uh, like coaching interviews and different uh, storylines just don't pop up. I wish you could do literally everything because that's kind of what the role is supposed to be here. It's it's always been weird to me that Madden wanted to separate the coach and owner thing. Like the coach thing being separate is cool from being able to go to a different team. But like, I feel like when you're on a team, you should just get the keys to everything here. So you got your fan support, your cash assets. You can set the price of stuff. You know, back in the Brown series, I was setting the price of the Friday night fried fish. We had a... Uh, you know, we got put on probation at one point because I was uh, broke in the series, but we fixed that. You know, we, we cooked the books a little bit. We figured it out. The fish saved the day for us, but you can set your prices here. Making money is important. Now, back when I used to play these franchises and owner's box, I didn't really have my whole head wrapped around, you know, salary cap and signing bonuses and all these assets it was cool to do but i didn't really understand it so i wonder how it would fare knowing what i know now playing franchise and i hope to find out because as much as i liked uh the 2k gameplay and the 2k franchise with the sports center show and everything i do love like madden's franchise mode just as a whole and I love that I could import draft classes from NCAA. On NFL 2K23, if I'm using the mod, I have to figure out like some kind of editor to get draft classes that have names. Because in that game, there was some sort of file or memory limitation to where if you had too many, like, if you're using like the custom rosters, the game like can't generate names anymore for the draft classes for some reason. Like it, it's a weird issue. I saw it in that last uh, video I did, but that would really hurt doing a franchise if I had a hard time figuring out how to have named draft classes using the uh, modded rosters. The mod itself runs fine. If you use the old rosters, it'll then generate names for players. But, uh, I'm really interested here in Madden 08 in general, and we'll get to a game at some point, but, you know, I just can't get enough of looking at this stuff, man. I want myself a San Fran Super Dog, and I, I want popcorn that's $3 at an event. Are you kidding me? How about that $5 sushi? I think that might just be the Friday night fried fish, honestly. You can sell merch here. You got jerseys for only 45 bucks. Super cheap. Parking, yeah, that was never cheap. But you can also market. And I don't know anything about this in the game. I probably didn't market because I'm like, oh, I'm spending money. Why would I do that? But Fan Appreciation Day, are you kidding me? Increase attendance for one game by giving away memorabilia? It costs you money. And I think, like, 
when it comes to in this game i don't know for sure but i feel like the intendance was actually reflected in the stadium whereas now in the modern madden it's just packed house every time you know it could be like jets and falcons in week 15 and it's just a packed house in madden 23 and everything i want to see that place half empty if your team sucks and you're not drawing a crowd i want to see that i want to have some motivation to get uh some fans in the stands like imagine if it's like just much quieter and everything and you see the stands are empty and you get a first down and there's barely any clapping it sounds like some golf match that would be pretty sweet so you got all that to worry about and some of this is in uh madden nowadays if you're playing as an owner i just wish they didn't limit you in other areas and then as the season continues you can see you know how that stuff goes you know, what if I, uh, I'm going to jack up the price here of all the tickets because I want to get into a game maybe later in the year. I want to see that place just empty. If we could be awful and no one shows up, I'd prefer that. So I know like the money you make here goes to like everything, but I'm not sure if your cash assets matter for giving out like signing bonuses and stuff like that. It'd be cool like if you actually had to worry about that because you always think about you know okay you can have this cupcake team but what stops you from actually uh just getting all the free agents just giving them the money well actually having to be able to afford the money would be the cool part another thing i always liked in these older maddens as well and i think even madden 12 you could do this if you just wanted to jump into another game you can you can play it or you could watch it like if you miss the super bowl say you're in the uh conference title game and you lose wouldn't you like to have the option to watch the super bowl that you just missed well guess what i simmed seven games and now we're five and two and we have full fan support and i am price gouging them the best i can Look at that. I boosted the prices on everything and attendance is just fine. I love that. Oh, you can even see it by season? No way. You can track it over the course of all your seasons in franchise. Expectations. Yeah, you're already exceeding mine here. And this is by season as well. Income by game, by season, your last home game. We made 700k off parking. Look how much money we're making. As long as we're winning, we're doing great. This is fantastic. What's this page here? So it is showing off the uh, cap room that we have here. The record in conference and divisions are uh, highest paid players. Of course, this is the era where rookies were actually negotiating contracts. So they made big money right away. There was no... We got a rookie. Our team is cheap. We can afford two receivers, three edge rushers, and just do whatever we want. That wasn't a thing. If you were wrong with your first round pick, it hurt even more because you didn't get any cap relief. If you wanted the cap relief, you have to go sign like Brad Johnson at the end of his career or something, or some, you know, just journeyman backup quarterback. So I've showed you a little bit of what this mode is all about, and I will show more, but why don't we get into an actual game now? And I want to play a home game. I guess it don't matter. Hey, we have the game of the week here, a rivalry game, two teams at five and two in the Deion Sanders used to play for us bowl. So this is just going to be a short game on three minute quarters, just to give you a taste of the gameplay here on Madden 08. There are some things that'll look a little sloppy, but there are definitely some things that I think you'll find impressive at the same time, as we are in the Georgia Dome for this one. Oh wow, this division's doing pretty good this year if you're not Arizona. Let's play a little football here. Joe Nedney to kick us off. Got Patrick Willis on special teams. That sounds a little, uh, a little much. So here we are, Joe Horn is out there, Michael Jenkins, is that right? And then Algie Crumpler. Oh, we're stuffing work done here on the play. One of my favorite running backs of all time. 
He was definitely uh, one of my favorite uh, Madden running backs back when I first started playing games. Like, I always loved having work done in Fantasy Draft. Let's see here. Vic. Oh, he's going to launch this one downfield, and it's a little too far. Oh, Roddy White is their slot to the right. Oh, these old rosters are a lot of fun. Let's see what they try here on third and ten. He's looking to the right, decides, oh, that's not going to work, and then gets tripped up in the pocket. So a big part of me going back to these older games is to see, like, okay, what's here, and do I need to work on some sliders or settings before I do something more uh, serious? But as far as default all-pro gameplay goes, the little bit I've played on here, I have been very much impressed. Coverage is tight. I think the running game can feel a bit easy at times, but I love just how challenging the corners are. And, you know, the defense can, uh, they can come after you, play good man coverage down the field, good zone coverage. So uh, I, I find it to be a fun time. That Cowboys-Giants game I had clips of earlier, I was just in awe the entire game that it was default all-pro gameplay because it was accomplishing a lot of the things that often I spend hours trying to uh, slider test in order to create. And so I think the challenge can be there. The gameplay can be a lot of fun. Let's see how the contains work in here. I don't quite remember if they just like stand outside and don't even rush. Oh, they run it here. It doesn't even matter and we're all over it. But let's just try it again. I want to see what they try to do here with Vic. You'll see the quarterback scramble. You'll see their vision cone, too, and they'll go through progressions. Oh, it's a screen. I'm trying to evaluate stuff, and you guys are not cooperating. All right, let's see if we can do a little bit better on this drive. We have a couple talented tight ends. Maybe we involve them. Ooh. Intercepted. That's D'Angelo Hall. House call. Diving in for the touchdown. Okay, that little cutscene there was totally worth throwing a pick six. But uh, I got hit there trying to throw it. That was a throw out of sack interception. Oh, man. You got to make a better throw than that, though. That's pathetic. Gave him an easy opportunity right there, Alex. You're never going to make it. You know, I could just really use, like, one game of football where I don't throw an interception. I could really use that right now. And it's not going to be in this one. In three-minute quarters. I also like the tackling on here. Like, the hit sticks are fun to look at, and just uh, the running game I find to be just physical and fun. Let's try a couple halfback dives here with uh, Frank Gore. Can't get intercepted this way. You do kind of run into players at time, and there isn't always animating, and that's just kind of the nature of the PlayStation 2 games. So, those areas of the game, you know, won't obviously be aged as well and then in coverage like the animations didn't really get super advanced until the the Madden 16 game and those two-man interactions but I love how close those defenders can be and how often they'll make good plays swatting the ball diving maybe we can get a couple in here we'll just make a catch here and get a first down for once Got some stats popping up there in the upper left. I like that touch of presentation as we'll try to get to the edge here. Frank Gore with good speed. So we know this play is probably not going to work. Let's try it anyway. A little wide receiver reverse. Arnez battle. Oh, we had a lane there. We had a chance if I maybe drifted a little further back. How do you... Uh... Oh, yeah, you can... Uh... You can... Just pick whoever you want to control here on a given play. For a while, they kind of marketed that. Like lead blocking for your running back. People didn't really do that, though. Third down. I love that camera cut right there. We got Alex Smith trying to make a play for his team here. For Vernon Davis. Almost picked. Tight end corner route. Man-to-man -man coverage. And they actually covered it well. At least I got some tokens there so I can buy some Madden packs for uh, cheat codes and such. 
Cheat codes used to be a thing. Vic, under pressure, throws a low one to Algae Crumpler. Look at me racking up these tokens here. I'm going to rip some packs at the end of the day. Offset eye, and Vic gets it out quickly to Jenkins. There's a first down. Let's see, how do you hot route here? Triangle? No, that's not it. Vic on first down. He gets sacked all the way back around the 25-yard line. Oh, we're getting that ball back, though. 53 seconds. Are you guys ready for a two-minute drill with Alex Smith today? Oh, no, I forgot about that. Yeah. They definitely changed that a lot because people would muff punts all the time by not fair catching. Haven't had to really worry about judging one of those in a while. We had so many close calls in here. Do I want to return it? Do I not? Usually better to just fair catch it. So Falcons got a chance to extend their lead here. Oh, on the rollout. There he goes, diving ahead to the 15-yard line. So the fans haven't gotten to see a whole lot of offense in this game. And now it's third and three. 36 seconds on the clock. And they keep it on the ground and get the conversion with Warwick Dunn. And now throwing on first and goal. It's open for Jenkins in the end zone. And Atlanta has a score on defense and now on offense as well. Oh, a squib kick. Let it go out of bounds. Nope, you got to get it now. Here we go. A chance to return it. He's dragging him to the 35-yard line. Might have time for one play here. Everybody go long. And come on, Frank Gore. You're down there. He's got it. But he's not going to get to the end zone for us. So we go to halftime. So obviously, 2K had the fantastic halftime show. This game just uh, pauses for you. Yeah, we've got to actually get some offense going here in the second half, though. We're down 14 to nothing. Basically, six minutes to go in the game. Here goes Frank Gore. So we go with a little play action. Wow. Defender got absolutely, or the, I think it was Gore, got absolutely annihilated here on the Blitz pickup. Check this out. Oh, man. I was focused on that, and then I forgot how to scramble. So, you know, things happen. Imagine a team came out in this formation today. They'd be left out of the building. But here we are. Got to make a play or two. All right, he got to make a play once again. Vernon Davis is down there somewhere on the deep ball. It's broken up. And it's fourth down with five minutes to go. We got to go for it. Really hope I get the conversion, though. Like, that would be pretty cool. Ashley Lalee. Nope, not going to happen. Turnover on downs. So, you know, a big part of me checking out these games again is for, like, those more down months. Like, this time of year, I'm obviously focused a lot on Madden. It's the best time for me to grow the channel. And, uh, you know, I usually get my best views this time of year as well. So I'm obviously trying to make new content on the new game. And I enjoy the, the series that I do. I don't enjoy uh, Madden not working, but comes with the territory, I guess. So, you know, I'm just over here basically scouting for February when there's nothing new for me to play. And I want to do something fresh because if I don't for a few months, I start to get a little antsy. I need something new. And uh, I'm really interested in doing another Cupcake franchise on uh, this game in particular. I really like the franchise mode. And I'm familiar, you know, with like creating the team and everything. And I love the idea of the owner's box. And I feel like the gameplay is pretty challenging. I might make a couple of changes here or there to make it even more so. And you know, as I get more familiar, I'll probably get better and have to make more changes. But I think this game gives you a pretty good uh, template to work with. So they're inside the 10 now and work done. Oh, lost the ball. 
We got it! And we'll take over at the two! It's not over yet, perhaps. So yeah, this is not a good passing game we have here. We know what we have to focus on. And that would be Frank Gore. A little delay, then bounce it outside immediately because you can cut on a dime. It doesn't work. Oh, man. I got on here last night. Played a quick few minutes with the Vikings. First play, I ran like an 80-yard touchdown with Chester Taylor. And now I can't even uh, make a play. What is your... Uh... There's no smart hot routes in here, unfortunately. That was a more advanced feature. A nice quality of life deal that wouldn't be here in the uh, Madden uh, PS2 days. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's uh, a safety. Which, it's ironic they call it that because we were not safe and now we got Kwame Harris injured. There's a hit stick for you, though. This was uh, back in the early days of the hit stick. And then the truck stick. I love those two mechanics. A little play action. There he goes. And he dives ahead close to a first down. Do they not slide in this game? Do they just dive? All right, I'm just blitzing here. Either we're getting the ball back through an aggressive takeaway or something, or they can score. I want to play one more drive of offense if possible. I want one score, man, in garbage time. We just got an encroachment. They're using the hard count on me here. We were offsides? The CPU, I think, just lined up offsides here. and I think it was my job to fix it. I don't think he's offsides, though. Oh, the fullback dive on second and inches. The CPU, man, they're just using all the good strats here. Hard count, you line up offsides, fullback dive. I ain't ever getting this ball again. They're going five wide with Vic. What do you think they're doing here? What are they going to do? A screen to Michael Jenkins on a third and three. Oh, they're showing me a fancy replay of it too. Man. This game really wanted to hurt my feelings. And it worked. So that is the CPU putting the game away against me. <laughs> oh, you got to give them credit. They uh, they did everything they could and it worked. Well, that's just the way it goes sometimes. So that game didn't go well for us, but I just wanted to show off the gameplay a little bit. What do you think of Madden 08's gameplay here? I think it could still be fun. And that is ultimately the question I ask myself. Can this be fun for building up a team? Like a created cupcake team? I think so. But there's a bit more I wanted to check out before this video is actually complete. And I really wanted to get to, like, the offseason. There are a couple things there I wanted to see and show. There was actually one more thing I wanted to do here. I kind of wanted to get into a game... With like a one or zero win team at home. The Vikings haven't won a game, of course. And uh, I wanted to see if their stadium would have like less fans at it. Here we go. The 1-8 and eight Raiders and the 0-9 Vikings. I need to get in this game quick. And we're here at the Metrodome. And it looks like it's still a packed house. You can't get the Vikings fans to not show up. I thought there was a sports game where the crowds were more realistically reflected i know like the show does a pretty good job with that you see a lot of empty seats on there but there isn't the same like owner's box level of control so i think we ruined a lot of the momentum there on that falcons loss we finished the year eight and eight let's go check out the owner's box again hey attendance stayed high though so it's fine i think we made plenty of money our income stayed relatively stable now, other teams were making more, though. The Jaguars out-earned us. Maybe that's not so good. So here at the end of the year, we can also see more of the progression. 
and we see that alex smith actually went up three overall this season he got three awareness he got two throw accuracy i'm not sure if that's the same two from preseason it could be but yeah your players do get better here over the course of the season you can see what ratings actually improved but I really want to get us to the off season before this video gets any longer. I'm sure this is going to be a pretty long video, but if you watch this channel, you are used to that. And what I love here is if I decide to do something, I can actually import a draft class from NCAA 08. So I can easily go in there, make draft classes, do whatever I want there. And I wouldn't have like some sort of set draft class because I don't believe they were randomly generated here in this uh, at this time. Super Bowl winner, by the way, the Chargers with a blowout in the Pro Bowl. So these games definitely had less emphasis on the overall NFL draft. Like you don't even start to talk about it until the offseason hits. So you don't quite know how good the class is or there's no in-season scouting, which I do think, you know, is a worse overall experience. But there is some cool stuff in this game we're about to get to. So we get the whole balance sheet here. We made $44 million this year. That's pretty cool. We got uh, Dick LeBeau retiring from the Steelers. But what was cool in this game is you had offensive coordinators, defensive coordinators, special teams coordinators. And it was the actual coordinators, by the way. So we can go around here. Brian Schottenheimer with the Jets. You got Mike Martz, Joe Philbin. You know, you got all these guys and their history with the teams that they've been on. And I think each coach actually benefits uh, certain positions, if I'm not mistaken. You got the training staff as well. That's going to cost you some money. And you have to choose if you want, uh, like, the focus to be on recovery or prevention. But, uh... You know, the really good ones here aren't all that expensive, so you can pretty much always sign them. Oh, wow. Coaches actually get progression here for their motivation and their chemistry, knowledge. This is pretty cool stuff here. Oh, then you can suddenly just change what team you want to control or become, a, you know, an owner of another team at the same time. But what if I want to fire, like, our... Uh, coordinator you can actually promote somebody to head coach but we're going to release a coach here because i want to see what happens when you try to sign a new coach so we see that you know these coaches here have offers is that uh rex ryan let's see we got brian billick here 82 overall offense offensive coordinator of the 98 vikings one of the best offenses of all time let's uh Go ahead and submit an offer here for 920. And he accepts it. In the offseason, you can also renovate, rebuild, relocate. Like, what if we want to relocate? Cities that have not made you an offer are less willing to contribute large sums of money. Proceed anyway, absolutely. And look at that. It's not just a bunch of preset options here. Well, I mean, these are all preset, but it's not like only... 15 cities or whatever let's say we want to go to uh portland we're moving the san francisco 49ers to portland and then you design a new stadium you got to get the money to actually do it you can change the team name in the uniform so you got your retirements here you're used to that kind of thing you got walter jones and marvin harrison john lynch and i think a lot of these guys will become coaches then which was a feature all the way, I know, at least up to Madden 12 on the PS3, where my head coach ended up being uh, Derek Mason, wide receiver. So this game actually had restricted free agency, which Madden hasn't had for quite some time. So restricted free agency is basically free agents who have less than four years of experience. Basically, their team has the opportunity to match an offer from another team and they would have more control that way so this is usually you know players who were undrafted 
and then you know became pretty good and a few years later because undrafted contracts are three years they become restricted free agents instead of unrestricted unless they were released then they become unrestricted but if their contract just expired now that original club has the chance to match so I just made an offer here because I want to see what happens. I offered like $2 million, yeah, $2.3 million. So I don't know if they have like tenders and stuff in this game, like, uh, you know, first, second round tender. It didn't really uh, say anything, but I imagine here if the compensation is none, that uh, I wouldn't have to give anything up to sign those players. So then what does it take us to? We got our free agents now. I believe, yeah, like Sean Hill and everything here. And look how complex the interest is for each free agent. Like, we have interest in the game again, but look how many factors there are. Like, team talent is the most important one in this case, team success, but it all adds up into a high level of interest here from Larry Allen. So let's submit an offer. We do get a deal done there. Wow, check out some of the free agents we have available here. We could sign Julius Peppers. Yeah, this would actually be a pretty sizable contract here. Let's submit that. So, like, you can click on a player here, and then it'll show their personal info, but you're able to see some of the ratings from this menu, some of the core ones, their career stats, what they're expecting, and then, you know, their awards, what they want. This is pretty cool stuff here. So I'm not sure it really matters the uh, owner's box stuff for actually handling your team here. I think that's more so for decking out the stadium, signing coaches and the training staff. I think here I'm only restricted perhaps by the, uh, the salary cap. I have no idea what happens if you're not making money in this game. I'd have to test that out. Let's advance one day. See what happens. And Julius Peppers is considering it. Same with Randy Moss, who now has his best offer from New England. I also like this. As you're scrolling through players, you can have that upper left portion. You can have it show players uh, personal info if you just want to see their stats from the previous season. That's also an option. Or their career stats. Cool touches there. So we've gone through all this, we haven't yet seen the draft, but there is some really cool stuff in here, including the college all-star game. Oh, he can only make it to the 10 undraftable. So you get a full game here with these prospects. That is just a very cool detail. I love if Madden had something like this today. Look at this running back. He's running through people. But you go to check out the ratings and be sneaky with it. And they're not going to tell you all that information. But that's Jermaine Nelson. All right. So you can go through that if you want to. You have your rookie workouts as well. I forget exactly how this works. But you can run this year's draft class through some workouts to get details on them. You have eight workouts here. So... We got uh, the projected players. How do we... Uh, let's check out some reports here. This is the top quarterback, apparently. Mark Kohlert, a scrambling quarterback, projected to go in the first two rounds. He ran a 4-3-8 first round. First round quarterback here. What do we got? IQ test, terrible. Arm strength, unavailable. Pass accuracy, unavailable. Work him out. Oh, this one is always tough. I always get hit by the ball. There we go. Subtle pocket movement is the name of the game, everybody. No receivers open. Oh, come on. It's not fair. This one is legitimately very difficult. Your eyes are constantly moving back and forth here. Not sure when they're going to actually tell you when to throw it. Yeah, I'm not going to be good enough at those to actually uh, learn anything about the quarterbacks here. Now, this one might be a little bit better. Of course, getting it through the ring here is the goal, and sometimes it's tough to know, like, all right, when do I have to let this throw go to go exactly through it? How do I have to throw it? There you go. How about that gold one there on the outside? 
That's going to go over it. Right on the money that time. There you go. And the gold one as well. That's silver. And can we go three for three here? We got a little double move to brown on the outside. Right there. No. Got one more try here. I can try to like move the quarterback to impact stuff, but I don't know how to get that ring. So I don't think I got anything out of that because I didn't play well enough with him. Let's just say it was Kohler's fault. He's not any good. So it seems like the whole draft experience here is pretty simple. You're given some combine data a little bit through workouts if you decide to uh, take over that player. And maybe that makes you know that all-star game a little more important to watch if you can take some notes and keep track of things. So the whole draft process is honestly nothing special here. They didn't really try to do a whole lot with it. You get, you know, the all-star game is extremely cool. And then being able to uh, do these drills is uh, interesting. But I feel like you're drafting and not really being sure of who these players are. Let's try it out. Hey, look, they trade. I don't like that trade, though. They move all the way up to one with their division rivals giving up just a third round pick. Minnesota. Oh, yeah? The Bills are moving up to four. What's going on here? All sorts of trades in the top ten. It just never ends. Like, almost every pick is getting traded. We're taking that quarterback, though. Yeah, there's just trades left and right. San Francisco is now on the clock. Give me the best running back. Lloyd Gregg, 6'1", 247 pounds, running a 4'3", You can't go wrong with that. Why are they booing me? Does that mean it was a bad pick? How do you get uh, scouting reports? No scouting report available. Maybe there's some more to learn about when it comes to these drafts here, but uh, on the surface, it looks incredibly simple. Trust me, we need Keontae Cleveland. All right, let me take Keontae Cleveland quick. It wasn't my idea. San Francisco 49. But you clap for the fullback. So now you actually have to sign these players. They're not just given slotted contracts. So right off the bat here, Mark Kohler getting a pretty decent contract here for a quarterback who's never played. And then once you sign them, that's when it shows off their uh, ratings, actually. So I know it looks like an 81 quarterback, 82 running back. That's incredible. But they were really generous with ratings back in the day. So that's not necessarily the case. It could be. But, uh, oh, 87 throw power, 92 accuracy. Yeah, that's pretty good with 89 speed. I think you can work with that. Then we get Lloyd Gregg here, a running back. What do we got? 99 speed at 247 pounds. That's not even fair. But I think I'm going to end the video there. Just giving you a look at all the stuff that is here in Madden 08's franchise mode. Probably a super long video here. This was not the goal when I was sitting down to record. There's just, you know, stuff to look at that I want to see. But... I do think, you know, a series on this game would be a lot of fun. I could actually see myself doing a pretty good, uh, like, cupcake, create a team type of deal in this, like I did Madden 09 a couple years ago on the PS3. So, let me know what you thought, everybody. What do you think of Madden 08 here in 2022? I'm pretty impressed. I think it's a cool franchise mode. I wish there were a little bit more to the draft, but all in all... There's a pretty cool package here. Hope you enjoyed the video, everybody. Please hit that like button if you did. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day.